All right. So let's recap real quick. What happened last time? We did quite a few examples of simplifying these expressions, okay? Edson's got his notes. Hopefully everybody's got their notes from last time. Uh, let's, let's recap that um, with this problem in particular real quick. Just as a refresher, let's walk through simplifying this expression together. Someone tell me something that I can do to begin. Distribute. Distribute what to what? The seven. I'm going to distribute the seven or the negative seven. The negative seven. Okay, the negative seven. So this will stay the same. Go. Oh, twenty-one. Well, negative twenty-one. Negative twenty-one x. these together. So uh, besides Branson, explain why 24x minus 90 is not, what would this be, negative 66x? Why is that not the case? Because you can't add apples and oranges together or okay. subtract them. Good analogy, you can't add or subtract apples and oranges together. They're two different things. Okay? So that's the analogy. What are these actually? Like, this is not 24 apples, right? It's 24 what? 24 x's. Right? 24 x's. 24 x's. Just pretend I wrote 24 x's right there. Now, all those x's, to get 24 x, what am I doing with all these x's? Multiplying them, dividing them? You're subtracting them from the 91's. It's like I'm subtracting 90, not subtracting anything from 90. Yeah, Tract, subtracting 91. Forget about the 90 for a second. How am I putting all these 24 x's together? Multiplying them. Multiplying them together? Adding x, times x times x times x times x times x times x times x. Adding them. Wait, you're adding. I guess we have to make up our minds. Is it multiply or is it add? Adding. And adding. How are we so sure now that it's adding? Because it's 24. No, x to the times all together. Okay, so the times of them all together would be x to the 24th power. Yeah. We're adding them together. It's 24, 24 times x, like, you know, like 3 times 4 is 4 plus 4 plus 4. Exactly. Multiplication is repeated addition. So we're adding together all these 24 x's. All right, that's what 24 x means. I mean, 24 x is added together. And then we're subtracting. What are we subtracting? 90 what? Ones? Good. Subtract a one, subtract another one, subtract another one, subtract another one, and then da, 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 da. subtract 90 of those. Good. If I just look at an x minus a one, an x minus a one, I can't do it. X minus one. What can I do? I don't know what x is. I can't subtract some number from a thing that I don't know. So, that explanation is what we call those aren't like terms, so you can't combine them. So then we plug 9 into here and here, and we got 126. Right. Then we plug, I, the, we left off at the end of class with me asking you to plug 9 in here. So let's see what happens when we do that. 24 times 9 is? 260. Minus 90. 126. That look familiar? It's the same as is this guy over here. Huh? You have done again, so you're all right. All right. Is that a surprising turn of events? Huh? It starts to do that because x is 
just there because like, you might not have the number to represent that potential x just kind of doesn't take up that space right so if you put a nine there it's just like you just multiply it by nine like you would regularly yeah so now like when we say uh, there's 45 x's well once we tell x to be nine then oh there's 45 nines right and then we collect it together with some more nines and we have a bunch of nines and then we multiply nine by some number Right, all, all of this stuff, remember the number tricks that we were doing? You remember that? Take a number, multiply by six, four, and so on and so on and so on. And we would simplify it down. And it turns out that all of this business, like all of that busy work here, gives you the same result as if you were to clean this algebraic expression up and just write 24x minus 90. They do the exact same thing, all that business is the same as just taking the number that you pick, multiply by 24, and subtracting 90. Exactly the same thing. Instead of doing all that work, this is really simpler. It's easy to plug enough, easier to plug a number in there, multiply by 24, and subtract 90 than it is to do all of this stuff. Okay, so that's why we call it simpler, because we want to take these expressions and do things with them. A lot of times what we want to do is take them and turn them into functions, okay? And this is all functions are. If we kept plugging things into this, like nine, then seven, then negative five, then whatever, a bunch of different numbers, and getting the results, we're starting to use it like a function. Because the function is put something in, get something out. Right? Before we get back around to that, we're refreshing our memory about some things, like simplifying expressions, because from previous work, you can see we can get some practice. All right? So, we should, unless I'm wrong, have this guy here, right? Here we're going to grab yours, screen show you all the simplified versions of all these? All the answers? No, I mean, I would really love to look at all these. Okay, let's take a look at all of the simplified versions of the expression. start right up here and I'll just scroll down slowly just check all your answers if you notice you got something wrong then let's go through it together and figure out why it's not correct If I remind you that when there's just a negative in front of something, you can think of it as a negative one, that might clear it up. 
If that's the only one that we had trouble with, then you know, look at number 19 and number 22, um, other ones where they're pretty much the same. The only difference is they have a, a number right here. I think we should all feel all right about distributing that negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times negative six p is positive six p. Combined like terms, six p minus four p is two p. Right, so far so good. good. All right, then. There might be some writing or some printing stuff on the back of this one. So if, if I wrote any of that wrong, just let me know. It should be negative three x minus four x times eight minus three plus nine. Okay. Um, first things first, we're gonna we're gonna distribute this negative four x. We're not gonna take negative three x minus four x, right? Because we have this multiplied by that, and that would come before subtract. Okay. So multiply first. So we'll go ahead and distribute that. Uh, or Distributing is for multiplication. Nine is not multiplied, it's added, right? It's added. So I'd have to like figure out all this stuff and then add nine after the fact. But nine isn't multiplied, okay? Um, I don't have to distribute this, actually. What can I do inside the parentheses? This is like eight minus three. Eight minus three is five, so we could do that instead. Multiply that by five. 3x minus 20x plus 9. And negative 3x minus 20x is negative 23x. Um, good point there. Um, Be careful when distributing. Sometimes people do distribute things that are being added to parentheses, um, especially like this kind of a situation of I do three plus x minus four. Okay. Keep in mind this is a three plus the parentheses x plus four or x, x minus four. So I'm not going to distribute this three, right? Because this three is not being multiplied by the parentheses. It's being added to the parentheses. So you would like figure out what's up with the parentheses, and then add three. But what is it with the parentheses? What is being multiplied by the parentheses? Not x, but the one right there. Which is kind of silly to have parentheses there, right? When you distribute a one, you get one times x is x, one times negative four is negative four. It's almost like there was no point in having the parentheses in the first place. But don't get tripped up by that because you could be simplifying an expression yourself, wind up with something like that for some reason, and then distribute the three mistakenly. Make sure if you distribute something, it is multiplied by the parentheses. Let's do number five now. Three plus two times 12x plus two minus five x. You can approach this first step one of two ways. Uh, I could distribute the two. I'm not gonna add three plus two and get five because two is being multiplied, so that definitely comes first. So I can distribute the two and get two times 12x is 24x. Two times two is four. Two times negative five is negative 10x. And I think that was the end of it, right? Yeah. And then combine like terms, right? Three plus four is seven. 24x minus 10x is a positive 14x. Or before we distribute the two, what can we do before we distribute the two? <coughs> 12 minus 5. 12x minus 5x is 
7x plus 2. Distribute the 2 now, we have 3 plus 14x. 2 times 2 is 4. There's that 14x, it's right away. And 3 plus 4 again is 7. So you can distribute the 2 to all three things. You can distribute to however many terms are in the parentheses. Is there three of them, or four of them, or five of them? Six. Seven times six times x over four x minus one minus two x plus twelve. I could distribute this six into this parentheses. You see the seven outside this parentheses here. I could distribute the seven at this point if I wanted to as well. Just to do it correctly. If I were to distribute the seven, I need to distribute to to this. Distribute it to this. Distribute it to this. If I distribute it to the first term, I have 7 times this thing. This thing is 6 times 4x minus 1. 7 times negative 2x is negative 14x. 7 times 12 is. Should I multiply the 7 by the 6? No. Why not? Because the 6 is being multiplied by the parentheses, so you kind of have to do that first or it's But it's also being multiplied by the 7. Yeah, but it's distributive. Uh, distributive. Okay, distributive. Distributive? Yeah, distributive property. Yeah. It gets thrown out of the lab because you know, you're going to multiply by a number that's changing the law of math. It's just easier doing it like the 6 than it is the 7. Because originally the 7 was behind a whole other parentheses uh -huh. until you did that. So, so it would have been easier to start by multiplying by the 6? We were supposed to do all of that in there first. And kind of, so it's just easier. It might have been easier, that's true. Yeah. It might have been easier. But now think about this. If I multiply the 6 by the parentheses, I, I was supposed to multiply the 7 by this thing right here, right? Like that, whatever that is. So really I should write it like this, like 7 times the result of whatever this is. Now if I distribute this 6, and then I also distribute a 7, which is what I'm going to have to do, right? I'll get the result of this, which is 24x minus 6, then I'll have to distribute the 7. If I multiply something by 6, and then I multiply it by 7 after that, it's the same as multiplying it by 42. So, you know, we could do that, and it would be absolutely correct. We could also do 7 times 6 is 42 and distribute 42 into this. Yeah. 42 times 4, 168 minus 42 minus 14x plus 84. 86x minus 14x is 1. It's negative 42 plus 84 is 42. If you, which you probably did, distribute the 6 first, okay, and then combine my terms, and then distribute the 7, you get the same thing. Just showing you outside the box thinking there. When you're in the box, you get all cramped and you, use, you lose your flexibility, and then something comes along that just doesn't quite fit in that box. You get all teary eyed. Find a bigger box? A bigger box. So if you get a bigger box, you know, all it does is allow the stuff that was outside the box to fit in the box. And well, now, there's, now you can get an even more advanced thinking that's outside the box, so outside this bigger box. Anyway. Um, now let's just talk about 7. 6x squared plus 3x 
minus 5. 6x squared plus 3x minus 5. Right. Let's cover up the 6x squared real quick. 3x minus 5. Is that negative 2x? No. No, but tell me why. 3x minus 5 is not negative 2. <laughs> that other yeah. number of x. So, because you can't do it. If 5 did have x, then yes, you could do basically anything. But since it doesn't have x, you can't do anything. Okay. Well, this has an x. Yeah, you can do something with that. Can you do something with this This guy that has an x and this guy that has an x? Yeah. No. No. Well, why not skewed? That's good. Why not? Okay. Let's go back to this question. Why not? The answer to the why not is the answer to my original question. Why can you not say 3x minus 5? It's not just as simple as saying, oh, it has an x, or it does not have an x. Okay. It's because this is, as we, we talked about already today, three x's. Three x's. It's x and x and x. <laughs> and this is five ones. Ones, negative ones. I mean, five. however you want to think of it. Negative five ones. Negative five ones, five negative ones. So let's call it, let's call it five negative one. Cannot take a one away from an x and have it make any sense, right? So I know what x is. I can't do any subtraction there. They're, they're not the same. They are different things. When we say they're not like terms, we mean they're not the same thing. One's an x. One's a one. Right? No. No. An x and a one are same. Okay. Well, here we have some other things. Are actually six other things. What are these things? Six x squared. This is an x squared, whatever that is, plus an x squared, plus an x squared, plus an x squared, plus an x squared, uh, plus an x squared. There's six of them. So we can see that an x, you can't do an x minus a one. Right? Some people might want to say this like, oh, zero x minus a one. Right? One x minus a one is a zero. That doesn't but when it comes to an x squared plus an x, first of all, you might want to say this is 9 of something. A lot of people will write 6x squared plus 3x is 9, and then they'll either write x or they'll write 9x squared, or they'll write 9x to the third. These are three common results of 6x squared plus 3x. But let's look at what they are. We have six of these, so one, two, three, four, five, six x squareds, and then added onto that we have three x's. Just looking at them like this, are there nine of something? No. We got x squared, we got x, they're not the same. When I say that, you're still tempted to say that x squared plus x is something. Let me show you the most common, I think. Once it's down to x squared plus x, here's the most common thing that I get, is that it's x to the third. You see a two there, you're right, there's a one there. Right. So why not three? Unless you can already explain this to me, you probably want to pay attention. Is there anybody who thinks that they can take a crack at why x squared plus x is not x to the third? Because you cannot add Gives you x third. Okay, so because so you're adding them, it's just 
x squared times x. Well, what's x squared mean? x to the second term, so it's like x times x. x times x, and what do we have? We have another x over here. What are we doing with these two, two x's and this other x? You're at multiplying them together. Multiplying them. So if I multiply an x by an x by an x, x to the third, that's a, by definition what x to the third is, is three x's multiplied together. Here, this is x times x, right? So this is x by itself, but we're adding. There are three x's like in our visual field. We can see three of them. But this is x times x plus x. This is x times x times x. So to make this equal to that, you have to have some magical ability that changes the addition into multiplication. Right? Well, turn it sideways and then you got x times. Oh, see, that's a dot. It's not a, so no. Uh, so nobody has that magic ability, in, at least in this dimension or this universe, I would imagine. In any part of the universe, x squared plus x is not the same as x times x times x, okay? There might be some like weird coincidences if we plug special numbers in for x, but not always generally true for all numbers. Yeah. So, why is it a dot when the x cross symbol means the same thing as the multiplication? We use the dot because x looks like the multiplication symbol. But then I have other students get confused, think that this is x decimal point x. Okay. I do the asterisk symbol usually. For multiplication? Yeah. Okay, that, that helps. But then I think maybe there's a, a, a footnote somewhere. I'm supposed to look at. A little asterisk. We're just, we don't have that many symbols. And if we did have enough symbols, then we just have to remember so many symbols. So it just depends on the context. This dot here. Like 3.4 in this context means 3 times 4. If I slide her down a little bit, now it means 3.4. Right? I mean, we have symbols and we, we reuse them in different contexts. We have words and we reuse them in different contexts, or at least words that are spelled the same, like wind and wind. It's all about context. Yeah? Wait, how did x end up becoming a multiplication thing? Like, why don't they just always teach us just yeah. not? Does that just make it easier? No, I don't know. I, I mean, I'd have to do some research there. I don't know. I mean, I guess, depending on who you are, you might call this symbol a cross, right? And I could see how multiplication could be thought of as a three cross four, because I can think of it again as a rectangle where it's almost like where three crosses four, right? I don't know. That's, that's me guessing. I don't know. I don't know how x became the multiplication symbol. Maybe x was already the multiplication symbol before we thought about using x in algebra. I don't know. Or they just picked a uh, letter out of the alphabet. There is a reason why x is the standard variable that we use. There is a story behind that. I can't remember it. It was a nice TED talk about it. Uh, I don't know why the cross is used. That's my guess. Three cross four. In in England, they call it. If you if you showed them that, they would say three by four as well. Three by four. It's or kind of has its origin in that. Oh, that would be a great construction worker. So yeah. go way back to like the Greeks and stuff. <laughs> That's why. Well, I mean, when I read an interesting blog article where. He makes that point. Like, you remember that sign I showed you where it showed you the elevation, the population, and then oh, the year that it was established? And then he just added those numbers together. Until we used these symbols and this, this place value system, and before that, when we were using Roman numerals and stuff, that kind of arithmetic was not as easy to just flippantly do, right? And so, in ancient Greece and Rome, when they were using Roman numerals, and it was like really a, a pain, S like setting it up as an area was like the way that you could do it in any reasonable amount of time. So it does. It goes back to ancient Greece and Rome because that's the way they did multiplication. Did they just use the draw in the sand when they were doing it? Yeah, before there was like paper that you could just have that was so cheap, it was just ridiculously cheap. Now they they 
cost of making paper a long time ago was ridiculous. So they have a little tray, like a shallow little tray. This is called perspective drawing. And they would just have sand in the bottom of the tray and a, their finger or a stick or something. Kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch, but an Etch-a-Sketch that you actually get messy with and write in there and then erase it. Um, anyway, that's how Archimedes died. I think that's why he said don't be stirred by circles. Isn't it? What's that? I think that's why he said his last word was don't be stirred by circles. Because he had it in the sand or something. Oh, you heard that? Yeah. And it's hard to know how much of this is apocryphal and how much is true, but yeah, uh, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. He's famous for uh, working out a really good approximation of pi, which is all about circles, and he might have said to the Roman guard or whatever, yeah. like, don't disturb my circles. Okay, well, so that was seven. So we figured out for number seven, if I ask you to simplify that 6x squared plus 3x minus 5, since x squared plus x is not x to the third, well, and it's not 2x squared, right? That's an x squared, that's an x. It's not 2 of anything. It's not 3 of anything. What would you say if I said add x squared plus x? Is it, is it can I put them together? Can I put an x squared plus an x and, and get something new? Well, we know it's not x squared. That's out of the question. That's out of the running. That can't be it. Maybe that way. Well, I can cross that out. What's that? This is not x cubed. That's x cubed. Is x squared plus x x cubed? No. No. x squared times x is x cubed, but x squared plus x, we can see, it's not x times x times x, it's x times x plus x. So if we try to put this, this so x squared plus x together. I, I understood that. Uh -huh. But you said if the x cubed meant for x squared. You said x cubed is x squared. Oh, I said x squared. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, so we know it's not correction x cubed. It's also not x squared. I mean, it's not x. It's one thing trying to be added to, the, to another. Let me show you how different these two things are, x squared and x. You can see how different x and 1 are. Okay, Let's try to visualize x squared and x. Well, x squared can be seen as a square. Right? It goes back to ancient Greece and Rome. That's why we call it squared. Because if we wanted to think of a number times itself, we would think about a square. That is x on all sides. And if I try to find the area of this square, what's the area of this square? x squared, it's x times x, right? Base times height, x times x, x squared. Now x, that's just the measurement of the length of this square, right? So from here to here is how long x is. So trying to add a square to a length. This doesn't make any sense. Just like apples and oranges, doesn't make any sense, okay? Um, times x plus 1 minus x. I'm going to have you do the last four because the skills you came into class with should, should really have been enough to do 1 through 6. And we're talking about 7 and 8. Now 9 through 12 are going to be on your plate here in a minute. x times x. We're distributing this x. So what's x times x? x times x is x squared. Right? Wow. Like 5 squared is 5 times 5. <laughs> x squared is x times x. And we go well, the other way, x times x is x squared. But what if um, the x in the parentheses already was squared? What would that be? OK, let's set that up in just a second. Let's just finish this one up. x times 1. x. Anything times Plus 1 is itself. OK, we distribute the x. And now we subtract this x. X minus X cancels each other. Five minus five, seven minus seven, <laughs> negative twelve minus negative twelve. It cancels itself out to zero. So what we're left with is X squared. Itself. What if the X inside was already squared 
x times x squared plus 1 minus x. What if it was already squared? Let's just, uh, instead of trying to do all this stuff in our head, let's just put an extra step in there. Distribute the x to the x squared. So let's see what x times x squared is plus x times 1, and then we'll have that minus x. Let's see. x times x squared. That's x cubed. Is x cubed. Because think about this is x okay, times x times something. What's x squared mean? x times x. x times x. Look at what we have there. So would that be the same thing for x parentheses x squared? Because you're still multiplying them. I guess I'm confused about your question here. Would x times x times x yeah. be the same thing as x parentheses x squared? So if they just was looking at x parentheses x squared? Yes. Just yeah. like that? Yeah. It would. Okay. And so x times x squared, it's a total of three x's being multiplied together, so x cubed. Plus x times 1 is x minus x, so x minus x again is 0. And we're left with x cubed in that case. And so I like, what would x to the fifth times x to the eighth be? I'm adding them, right? We're, we're multiplying them together. x to the fifth times x to the eighth, or x to the fifth parentheses x to the eighth, or however you want to indicate multiplication. x to the thirteenth. Exactly, because this is five x's multiplied. So this is eight x's multiplied, and we're multiplying. When you're multiplying, then you can add the eight and five. So if you have in your mind this rule where you can add exponents, that's when it applies. Okay. I would suggest for getting that rule, and just think, what is, what is this, okay? Because that rule messes people up. That rule and forgetting how that rule works is what makes people do, do x squared plus x is x cubed. Because there's just this vague notion of adding exponents and they forget when to use it. But if I think, this is an x squared, this is an x, that doesn't make any sense to put them together. But x to the fifth times x to the eighth is just a bunch of multiplying. Multiply, 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 and then multiply by multiply, right? I just get a bunch of x's that I multiply together. How many? Well, five here, eight there, a total of a string of 13 being multiplied together. Okay. So go, uh, go forth, 9 through 12. I want to remind you that, um, like, 10x squared minus 14x is not negative 4x or negative 4x squared. It's not either of those. And if you have trouble remembering, like take it down to the most basic. If I can combine 10x squared with 14x's, then I should be able to combine 1x squared with another x. With 1x squared and 1x. And when we, when we look at it that way, we realize there's just no way for this to go together. This is an x times an x. And this is an x. No matter what you try to get those combined together to be, it just won't ever be that thing. And it's, it's not two of anything. This is an x squared. This is an x. They're different things. It's not x cubed because we're not multiplying them together. It's just this is it. That's as simplified as that can be. Okay. Finish that up for homework. Have that done. And goodbye. Have a good weekend.